that am I in alignment with who I say that I am mm. and who I claim to follow? Mm. That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Yeah. And that's a question that I asked myself, yeah. which helped me to <clears throat> really begin to do what we call some people call soul searching, mm. self-discovering. And for some Ghanaians, when you hear that, they're like, inside <laughs> and You know, because it's something we don't talk about. But I can tell you right now that a lot of the things that we are dealing with in our lives and in our personal lives, mm. It's because we we are doing things that we've been told to do, mm -hmm. or we're doing things that have been taught to us for us to do. We are, or we're living out a template that has been given to us. And the truth about it is when we do that, it gets to a point where the template, if it's not in alignment with who God is mm -hmm. and it doesn't align with who God's intention is, it mm -hmm. has an expiration date. Mm. And so what you see now in the news and maybe in your church and, and when it comes to the body of Christ is you see a lot of people leaving the faith because the things that they were taught, the standards that they were paying attention to, the customs mm. that they've been relying on didn't seem to work. Hmm. And so you see a lot of people leaving. You see a lot of people saying, I can't align with this anymore. Some people are completely denouncing Christ. Hmm. And for some of us, it's not even what we've learned in the church. Sometimes what the culture has taught us. We see that even in marriages, people are separating. Because the culture has told us how we are supposed to do things. When we get married, when you go through, you know, when you when you first kind of few years or the, before you get married, you have those few talks with people and they're like, you know, when you get married, you got to make sure you're providing food, not just the food for the mouth and basically on demand. Hmm. If you want your husband to stay with you, if you don't want him to go somewhere else. We're taught that women don't talk, you have to be submissive. You don't have anything to say. I'm the head. This is the headship. You know, when it comes to, you know, our per and our families, there's just, this is how we do it. This is how we are we're raised. This is how we are. There's nothing that needs to change. Zanayati. Mm -hmm. This is the pattern. This is the template that we move with. And for some of us, a lot of us will pick and may pick and choose what we want. Other of us are very, some of us are very extreme where we just completely reject whatever template has been given to us. So we are extreme, even to the point of anger and hatred. And to some of us on the other end of the spectrum, of what we call conformity. We just abide by the rules. We just do everything. We check every box. Hmm. And what we're learning and what we're seeing is a lot of us, and even here tonight, because I've had a whole bunch of conversations, mm -hmm. people are no longer happy with the template hmm. that they've been living out. They're no longer satisfied with the patterns that have been carried down from generation to generation or have been carried down for this time period or for this generation. Mm. They're not satisfied anymore mm -mm. with it. They're not satisfied that, you know, a woman has to, you know, not even a woman. They're just not, it's just causing a lot of rift. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're, you're single, you can't buy a house. That's what we've been taught because when you get married, you need to wait for your husband and then you can buy a house so you can do it together. So your life is really on pause until you can do, until you meet someone who then you guys can do it together. You can't exercise in your ministry. You need to wait because you need a husband next to you to help you to, to be able to do the ministry. Mm. 
or even if you're in ministry with your husband, you don't have, you're not an active person in this situation. You're actually in the background. So when you start talking too much, we got to tell you to slow down mm. because your husband is supposed to be in the front. Or even you're a mom of however many children, you are not supposed, you need to focus at home and and, and your, your, your purposes and all of that, your children will live that out for you. For some of us, even the way that we get married, the family has a pattern. This is how we get married. And this is how you're supposed to get married too. Or this is what we've seen in our past. We don't want that. So this is, we're gonna do extreme, the extreme opposite. And we're going to do it different. Hmm. We have people, this is how we raise our children. You're going to be like this, A, B, C, D. This is how we do it. There's no question. Hmm. And the thing is, it's not just in Ghanaian community. It's everywhere. Everywhere. Because when you look even at, since COVID has happened, there are so many people who have left their jobs simply because it was not fulfilling to them. Hmm. They realized they had been taught that going to school and being a certain occupation was more fulfilling than being maybe an entrepreneur or being an artist, something that they actually love to do. And so you're seeing this split where people are bursting out hmm. because there's this, as last week as we talked about, when there's like this new wine coming in hmm. and you put it into old wine skin, when the two are, when it com comes together, it combusts. Hmm. It's no longer needed or effective. And what's happening is that we're seeing a lot of people frustrated, mm. a lot of people afraid, a lot of people not living out the fullness of who God has called them to be. Mm. And the truth is, and what I wanna share with you tonight is that God is the God of new experiences. Yes. God wants to have a new experience with you. Yes. God is not fixated on a template, nor is he fixated on the thing, the way things have been done in the past. But God is the God who wants to show you a new side of himself. Yes. All the time. Yes. And especially now. Yes. So when we speak about limitless and your mind is opening up and your heart is opening up and you're beginning to feel that shift of discomfort, mm. that is the spirit of God inviting you to the more. Yes. Yes. But he's not moving with the template. Mm -mm. And he's not moving to the templates that have been um, established for, for us That's right. through the system That's right. around us. And that system can be family. It could be your peers. It could be your workplace. Mm. It could be your. Um, it could be a religious organization. It could be whatever. Mm. Whatever is tuning your your mindset, Jesus. influencing your mindset, Jesus. that is not in alignment with who God is in this season. Mm. God is saying, "I need you to break out of that conformity." That's right. That's right. Because the truth about conformity. Is really the thief of joy. People say comparison. I believe com conformity is the thief of joy for the believer. Mm. Because when we do what we, we're supposed to do according to standards set by people and culture and family and profession, we nullify the power of God that he wants to exude mm. in our lives. Amen. Amen. And the thing is, in this season right now, God is... He's want, he, he wants us to have a new experience, but he, and he doesn't want us to miss out on those things because that we are living out a life that is not for us. Mm. Mm. Now, I know this message is not for everybody, but it's for everybody who is feeling that nudging in their spirit that there's more to this yes. than what I've been doing so far. Yes. Yes. There is more to this. Yes. Conformity doesn't allow people to be who they truly are mm. in Christ. Mm. Conformity doesn't allow people to be able to value the, indi the, the, the individuality and their own, uh, their own individuality mm. and the individuality of others. Mm. Because what we do is when we are in a system where we are conformed, 
when we see someone stepping out the box, either we reject it or we, we become jealous of it. Hmm. Because we are conformed. And the, the, there was this book I read, I don't know who wrote it, but he was saying how we believers are jealous of the world hmm. because they, they see the people in the world living out um, living out what they wish they could live out. Mm. Bec but because of the teachings that we've been taught, a lot of um, believers have been, you know, taught to suppress themselves and fear being who they truly are because they can't trust mm -mm. themselves. Or if you're happy, mm. you can't be happy. But we're going to get closer into that. Mm because there's more, because there's more. But the point that I want to make in this in this moment is that God is calling you out of following the patterns and the standards and mm. the customs mm. that have been defined to you by your sphere of influence. Mm. Not who you're influencing, but who you have allowed to influence you. That's right. Now, does it mean that it's bad? No, but it's no longer effective to where God is taking you. Yes. It yes. is done. It's fulfilled its purpose.